I have banner material. I'm getting ready to start my next project um, that is going to be a banner. This is Rock Lawn, and it's rolled up, and it's being a little tight. And so what I wanted to share was how you can control some of the roll and some of that kind of stuff. Um, what you do is you take your blow dryer, and I won't do it on air because it's so loud in the camera, but you do your blow dryer and you heat it. And that's how you unroll your banners if you store them rolled. And that's also how you unroll your floor cloths as you go ahead and heat it. And you'll be able to see it. It'll just kind of... And then it'll be all flat. Um, so the, the paints and the varnishes respond really well to it as well as the material that the rock lawn's made out of. I'm going to go ahead and paint on my rough side. The smooth side just doesn't have um, the right kind of texture for my brush use. But if you were doing a rubbing type technique or something like that, um, then that might be perfect. You can paint on either side. And to keep your banner from rolling up or having any kind of like this kind of thing, um, what you want to do is you just make sure that you apply at least one coat of something to the back so that you get weight from the back and pull from the back as well. Okay, now what I've got here, I've got a kind of interesting little thing that I'm going to try. I want to back, let me back you out. Okay, I want to back my banner with this burlap. Okay, and then I want to paint my banner, and then I'm going to paint and hang it on my, um, my banner topper. Okay, and so what I need to do is I'm going to size my banner, my cut edge of my, not my banner, my um, burlap. I need to size that, the size that will fit through here. And then the goal is, is that when we get it done, I'm going to have a little flop over here that I'll secure with two little buttons that we're going to paint. And there we go. And then we'll have it buttoned down onto this banner topper. Okay, I think it's just going to be cuter than all punch. But then once we get the um, this burlap cut to size, then I want to fray a little bit. And you can put a little bit of that uh, fabric um, lock stuff, I can't remember what it's called, to keep it from going any further. And then I'm going to fray. So I've already got this side frayed about how much I want. I'll cut this side, and then I'll pull out the strings, and then I'll lock it down so that I don't get extra fraying going on. And I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to attempt to rescue my scissors here. I'm going to attempt to do a weird kind of a hang. Maybe this can be wider and be as wide as my banner is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it and get my straight edge out and stuff, but I'll just mark it there. And have maybe this flap will be longer or wider than this back thing. And I'll, I'll test it wide first. And then if I like it, then I'll um, then I'll go ahead and cut the, the bottom thing. All right, so I have it all laid out. I've got my eye leaf autumn up there, and I'm just looking at it to see if I like about that size of a piece of rock lawn. And I think maybe just right about slightly bigger. definitely want to leave some of that burlap showing, so if we cover it all up, then that's bad. Okay, I think we're about there. So then I'll cut my rock lawn to be the size that will fit within my burlap. My burlap is the size that will hang from here, and I'll measure it all, and it'll all be in the pattern um, when I get done. The other thing that I will do is I will make sure that I cut my rock lawn a little bit extra long so that I can flap it underneath with the with the burlap. I definitely want the rock lawn to be secured that way. I don't want to connect it to my burlap because burlap is a little bit of wiggle. So we'll make it so that when we feed it in, um, it feeds in together as a unit. So I'll cut it the length of the flap minus my fringe area. And of course you can adapt that to whichever size that you're going to need. All right, we're getting ready to measure and stuff. I want to use some measuring tools. I've got an L square and a T square. This is the 12 inch long um, T square. You want to give yourself a straight edge, okay? And you can pretend like it's going to be a straight, straight edge, but um, that's usually not going to be the case. So I'm just going to make it as even as possible and know that it's straight, okay? Because then what we'll do, I'll mark this. I'm marking this with my triple threat ghost writer. And then what we'll do is we'll take our um, our L square, 
and we'll mark in just a little bit from the edge so that I can get, oops, got to mark those lines up together. See how straight I am. Those of you that so frequently probably can do this without any kind of tutorial. Okay, so then I'll just continue that line on down using my T-square. And then I'll measure how wide I want this. I'm very technical with the paper measuring here. Okay, and I'll know that I go to there. Then I'll use the L-square on this side. And get a straight line, and I'll mark that, and then I'll cut it all the way down and just allow myself some of that slop. I'm going to use my nonstick black craft mat as my uh, backdrop, and I'm going to paint the banner with a 2-inch foam roller. I'm going to stand up for this. Okay, and I'm going to roll on. If you brush on to a banner, you can have some rolling and you can have some problems. You definitely want to, not roll, if you brush on. I think I said that. Anyway, so you go ahead and you'll do all the edges and you'll give it two coats of khaki tan. Okay, I've got the 24 inch um, tracing paper on a roll. What I love about this is just you don't have any tape, any tape together little seams. And what's really cool is look at how clear that is. It is so clear, and you can actually layer, layer over layer over layer. And this is blue ink and not black, so it would look much, much crisper if I had black ink under there. But you can see that this is just really clear. And they actually use this material um, for uh, learning disability, um, for reading and, and learning disabled classes. They put a piece of this um, slightly yellow paper over the text, and it helps your eyes to focus, which is just kind of trivia. All right, and to trace my pattern, I'll use a pen stick. And what these are great for is they are great for gliding and no bleeding and no smearing. They are a super awesome little tracing pen. And I'll just go ahead and get my pattern traced. All right, after you have your mess on your nonstick craft mat, then you just simply give it a couple of squirts with some water. You can let it soak for just a second. It will actually just peel right up um, right away. But um, if you let it soak for a second, then it softens the paint just a little bit. And what's neat about it is um, it actually, um, hot glue gun, epoxy, everything will not stick to this. So it is amazing. I've had this one, I think this one's been going for a year or more. The only thing you can't do on this, and sometimes it really is hard to remember, is you can't cut on it with a razor blade because then, of course, you'll cut the plastic. It is not a cutting mat. It is a non-stick craft mat. So that's how easy it is to clean that up. Okay, a little bit when you roll on um, when you roll on your paint on the rock lawn, you'll get just a little bit of raised kind of grainy stuff. So we'll take these little flexible foam sanding discs and we'll just go ahead and give it a sand. And you can listen, scratchy, much smoother. Okay, so that'll knock everything down. That happens on floor cloths and canvas as well, and I'm not sure why, but. Um, it's easy enough to handle as long as you realize it's there. All right, to begin with, I'm going to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to begin with spattering because I don't want to do this background so plain, but I don't want it to get too busy by adding words or anything else in the middle of it. So I'm going to use the, yes, it's Oyster Beige. That's the new color from DecoArt. And thin it with water. And then I'll use, this is going to be snow type spattering. I'll use the um, heavy handled bristle and I'm going to go ahead and just faintly put um, little snow spatters in the middle of the scene. I'll flip up my flap there so that they go all the way up. I want them fairly even. They're not all going to show. Then we'll take out burnt umber. And this is going to be a little bit more like what I call directional spattering. Okay, and so I'll get that nice and thinned out. I want to keep this turned. You want to be careful of anything around your spatter area, like your glasses, your cell phone, things like that. Okay, get it nice and tapped off. And now with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my brush pointed to the outside at all times. Because they'll go stronger towards the outside edge.
and then we can have a couple come on through really faint. This is what you do at the end. Okay, then we're going to take soft black. This is going to be real strong, so I'll make sure to even this out. Okay, so tap that off. Real strong. And this will be just fainter. Pointing to the outside. I'm not going to need this this long, so I may have to do some spattering later when I decide how long it's going to actually be. Okay, so now we have a kind of modeled background. I'll wait for this to dry, and then I'll test my pattern over it and see if I think I got enough. Okay, so we're basing. Let's get you in a little bit closer. I want to point out, first of all, that when I'm basing, I haven't gotten the back of my um, project painted yet. When I'm basing, I try to flip up the area that is going to flap over my table so that I don't crease it. If you crease it coming down over the table, you can stretch it a little bit. Um, this is, after all, still a fabric. So that's a good helpful tip. And then I'm basing using a really good round. I'm going into cocoa um, for the hat, and I'm flattening my brush. See how chiselly straight that is? When I set it down, I'm going to get a really, really good flat beginning edge. And that allows me to do a couple of things. I can slide into edges. Um, actually, look at that perfect little stroke there. Okay, so um, that's what you want with a flat, something that ends and starts on a chisel. Okay, so and it will go flat on both ends. All right, that does that is not true with all round brushes. I think I might have just said flat brushes but round brushes. This is the easy stroke. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and base coat, and we'll have a list of the base coats, because that's really um, not something that we need to probably teach so much. All right, we're going to highlight with Honey Brown using the crescent, uh, crescent brush. I always want to call it a crescent stencil brush, and it's not. We use dry brush, dry paint, and a dry paper towel, and we rub all of, but just a little bit of the paint off of the brush. We start where it's going to be the brightest. I'm not going to worry about my crow because he'd be easy to patch. And I don't want to look like I outlined, um, floated. And I've got these um, sections on here, and I'm not sure I want this pumpkin sectioned. All right, and I think that's looking just a little bit chalky. All right, I took out some raw sienna, and I think this will take care of our chalkiness. Yeah, that's warming it right up. Okay, and then we'll take the same and this one we'll treat with the sections. And I've got to dry that off a little bit. If it comes off really wet, you want to dry it off more. All right, I'm going to try something different. I'm not getting an effect I like with this. Um, it's just being fussy. All right, we're going to try Patty's favorite dry brush and dry brush instead of dry rub. So you load really juicy paint in your brush. Load, 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 flat. And then you don't want to have any saddlebags on either side. Okay, then you flick once on your paper towel and wipe off any side um, yuckies that you have. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to skim, and we're going to go be shape following. And we keep it concentrated in the middle. We don't flip our brush over until the toe of our brush starts curling. as we need to. The top is super ultra juicy. It's feeding the bottom, which doesn't look like it has any paint on it. Yeah, something about this color is um, not behaving well, not playing well with others. Okay, so see how we're starting to get like sections. Okay, and I think 
I want this guy to be in front of the sky. And we can do this on the top one as well. Um, smooth out my rock lawn. And you just connect and slightly overlap the sections as you go. And once again, we're not worried about that, that little birdie boy. Click, and I'm going to repeat with that color. It's a great way to get a nice um, highlight effect. And do I want that one in front? I don't think I can have that one in front. All right, we'll come up top. And now I'll start decreasing the coverage. So I'll make it stronger towards the center and not go down as far to the bottom. Okay, and while it's still wet, don't go back in there. And same thing here, I'll do less and less coverage. And as we decide maybe the light's gonna hit here and here, these will get less over here on the sides. And we'll bring this up a little higher. Light source is always an important thing to figure out. Okay, and then we'll come on over here to our other pumpkin. He's got a kind of funny thing. He's gonna be maybe a pumpkin that has a couple of layers, like he's got a bend in the middle. So you wanna make sure you're shape following for him. Like he's poking out on the top here. And then we might just barely skim, almost like a figure eight or a bowling pin here. My touch is feather light touch, so you don't you don't use a lot of pressure, and it's not exhausting to do because you're not using any pressure. The brush is almost floating in my hand. Okay, so I have to fix him and base coat that so that he can be on top there. And then you want to change. My highlight is going to maybe be, actually, my highlight would be on that side. <clears throat> um, make sure that. Pay attention to your light source. Okay, and curve where the natural shape of the pumpkin would curve. And the first coat is just kind of yuck, but then um, as we layer a couple of different layers, it starts becoming magical. Okay, and the important thing to look at at first is do we have um, a shape forming? Okay, so he's going to be in the front, so we'll come over here. I think we might be able just to get rid of him without... without basing over him. There we go. Now we'll take... Um, our next color, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my brush aside because I want that gooey stuff. And actually, no, I'm not going to. Normally, I would just go into the next color, but I'm in a, a basement room, and so that means that my drying time is taking longer. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush, and I'll show you how to re-dirty it in case you can't go from one color to the other. Okay, I've rinsed my brush out, and I'm pinching all the water out. And this is really a special little brush because it is cut like a filbert, so it's rounded on the tip. And it's also shaved from side to side. And you'll notice that mine is kind of getting raggedy. The more raggedy they get, the better we like them, so that's okay. Um, they really don't wear out quickly doing this technique, even though it seems like they would. All right, we're gonna wet or we're gonna dirty our brush by going back into that main color on both sides. And then we're gonna move backwards onto the honey brown. and we'll pick it up and load it nice and juicy, but it'll be dirty brush, and the mother paint and the father paint will make a little baby color paint, and then make a new paint. 
and that way you get a matching color because there's a little bit of both colors in it. <coughs> okay, so now we're going to start where it's going to be the brightest. I figured out why the honey brown was so strong. It's a very good base coating kind of color, so it's very opaque. And that's why it was giving me fits. Okay, so we're starting to get some shape. just a little bit over here as it's fading into the, the distance kind of. Okay, see how that's giving us shapes and it looks like it's higher and lower and stuff like that. That's what we're looking for. Now at this point I'm going to flip my brush over because I'm starting to get a, like a little curled toe and so I'll just force all the paint back onto the other side and pick up enough to be juicy loaded. It should be flat um, and juicy across the top. And you want to go shape following, which means sometimes you have to correct your angle. Okay, so we'll come over here. And I'll bring that right up next to that edge. You can hear just a little brushing. Ch -ch -ch -ch. And reload some more. Sometimes, if you need to go backwards a step, just go back one color. Like I was getting just a little bit of a draggy line there. So I'll go back up to my other color and smooth that out. Alright, we look at them and we say, okay, how are we looking? don't think we're anywhere near close yet. So I think what we'll do is we'll flip our brush over. And we'll repeat one more time. You definitely want a flat surface. What's happening here is I've got a row of paper. You can see I've got some um, bubbles on my... So I've got paper that I've allowed to get wet, then I've got my mat on top, and then I've got a piece of fabric. That's not making it so that I have a very flat surface. So I probably need to think about changing that paper. But so I just need to move this to where I'm not going to catch one of the high points. And you want to be careful um, dry brushing over the top of um, cardboard because you can pick up the corrugation in the cardboard. Okay, so now we're just doing a couple of strokes on each. And we're really getting some dimension now. Pick up some more paint. And then same thing here, I'll have to find a flat spot.
Okay, and we just continue. Wah! And we stay in the lines. Okay, good thing we're going to have leaves coming out of there, huh? Okay, I think we'll go dirty brush. I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe off some of the paint off of my brush, um, and go dirty brush into um, antique gold. And flick, and feel for dryness. All right. Okay, and we'll just take this, it's going to be our, one of our wah, lightest highlight colors. So we want to be a little bit careful and sparing with it, keeping it where it's supposed to be the brightest in our composition. Just a little kiss over there, just so it doesn't get lonely definitely brightest over here. And now same thing up here. Reload, flick. Always remember to flick on your paper towel. That is imperative. same thing over on the other large pumpkin. I change directions in this section, so I go one half goes around this way and the other half goes around this way and then you kind of meet in the middle. <clears throat> So you can use dry brush for any technique, but it's really helpful when you're trying to apply um, over a darker color because you can just really get by with doing a sequence of lightnings or highlightings. So we're going to continue on with the antique gold. If you set it down too strong, then you just tickle out um, any kind of ridges with the color before it. All right, now what I've got going on with this one right here, and this is something to watch for, even color, even color, even color, even color. So what I have is a very flat pumpkin. What I have going on on this one is this point right here is sticking forward. Okay, so I'm going to need to increase highlights or shade down some of the stuff that I have going on. Okay, so I think this guy should be the highest, so we'll try increasing highlights first. And we really have a complex shape because we're trying to get the sections to look rounded plus the pumpkin to look round. So it can be a little bit like, hey, that's a lot going on there. Okay, so now I've just added a little bit more to that. And that's not helping me with my roundness on the pumpkin, but it did help with the roundness on the little um, pumpkin sections. Okay, we're we bringing it forward. I think we're getting there. Okay, let's bring this guy down, see if we can't tickle out that little blob that I made. He's not got a very good transition up there. So 
going to work on that. All right. And I think it's time to stop with these colors and work on some of our um, deepening. All right, we're going to glaze with Heritage Brick. I've got a great big number three quarter inch um, workhorse angle shader. So what I'm doing is I'm going to glaze under under the pumpkins. And I want him to round out a little bit. I don't like that shape. Okay, and just bring that all the way across. And then we're going to glaze the bottoms of these um, shapelier pumpkins. Just kind of kiss and reach up to that highlight area. And then we'll shade across the tops and down. And where you need the, the yellow to tone back a little bit, just glaze over it, will give you a very, um, it'll tone evenly, almost like makeup on your face. Okay, and then this little guy right here needs to orange up a little bit. You can walk that in. You can just reload water and then blend in the same spot. I'm going to glaze right over the top of his tail. And then we'll glaze down this other side completely. And notice it's leaving the highlight. shade with, and where is it, Antique Maroon, underneath the edge here, and then I'm going to walk it around the side. I've erased my lines so that they don't look so strange. I've got white lines in the middle of my shadow areas. I'm going to make our edge come down here, and then of course smooth it. We're still, in essence, glazing things. Um, we want to try to knock back corners and stuff now so that we get a more cohesive round um, pumpkin. I'm not certain that this pumpkin is going to stay this color because right now I'm not in love with it. But I'm going to fight for it for a minute and see if I can't use some basic principles and have it strengthen its own self. Okay, now we'll come over here to this little guy, and this far leading edge is going to be the corner that gets dark, as well as the top right there, but mostly this bottom corner. Let's even bring it across there. thing up here. Let's go ahead and give him a little knock back. Down along the bottom and then up across right here. to get these guys to get into a more pumpkinly um, attitude here. Okay, we'll come right over this. And just shade on top to round him up. And same thing over here on the top. They're getting kind of better. 
sometimes this is a matter of letting it ride until you develop some other elements, but redoing this is going to be a drag if I have a bunch of other stuff painted, so I'm trying to figure out if this is going to be okay. And so I can glaze down just slightly to make it be a little bit more burnt orange and part of the, fam the color family. Oops. Okay, and I toned them down just a little bit. Maybe they're not so screaming. And we'll let this ride for a little bit. All right, I got rid of my um, pumpkin sections up here. And I'm not certain that I should have. So I'm going to bring a couple down. But not quite all the way down. Uh, maybe we'll flip this. Maybe bring that just down just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to dry rub, not dry brush, dry rub with, um, I think, is it Coco? Coco. Pumpkins are hard and shiny, so we need to get a shine going. I'm going to go into Antique. Gold. And I'm just really briefly touching where I want those shines to go. And now I'll go up into the Oyster Beige Dirty Brush and just give it a little bit of that shine. Now, to go backwards, I'm going to have to really clean this brush off, go back into Cocoa, and then go back into Cocoa one more time. That neutralizes the color on the brush. And that's not showing up at all. And into Antique Gold. guys. And then the oyster beige. Oops. Okay, pumpkins are going to stay right now. All right, we need to do some accenting on our overalls. So I'm going to take light French gray blue and a Chesa fur brush. And I'm going to smash that puppy open with some water. Blot on my paper towel. And we want to give just some kind of texture. Okay. Nothing too crazy, but I don't like the idea of his jeans being real ruggedy new and awesome. And then why don't we go ahead and give it some cross as well, almost like a weave, like they're a rough weave. And 
we definitely want to stay off of our pumpkins. Okay, so that's his little rough weave thing going on there. Oops, hello. You've got to turn your project so that it's easy to work on. Otherwise, you'll end up doing what I just did. And then we can go ahead, let's go ahead and give him a little bit of highlighting with the weave down the middle of the legs. And then up top here, we'll come straight across. And then we'll do some in the middle of his pocket. And reload. some on here. Okay, I think that's probably enough. And then we'll go ahead and use our big oval glaze. I'm not oval glaze, um, angle shader. And deep midnight blue. Okay, and just shade. Go ahead and shade right through his, um, where his tie goes and stuff like that, the belt. And you can walk that out a little bit. And just reload. And flip him over for the other side. his legs. If you want your float to behave itself, add a little bit more water because it'll flow like water and so right now like when I'm trying to stuff it down into a V, um, I want it to behave exactly where I want it to go and so a little bit of extra water will help you. If it's dry you'll have a problem. Okay, now we have to float above and below the um, belt, and then we'll base coat it in that. Uh, well, first, we'll dry our project. Okay, so we'll shade above and below the belt, rounding out our corner there so that you don't end up with a little funny flat line. We'll switch to a smaller brush and shade on the um, overall suspender thingies. So we need to go a couple of things. We need to come down and around and under. Come across the bibs. And shade underneath where his Head is attached. And we'll have to do something with this pocket. I think what we'll do is we'll make it seem like there's something hanging out there. In this pocket. And then just kind of line it on there. just to let you know um, we'll edit out the um, all the layers of here but what happened is by between my colors I really like these colors not the orangey colors with what I've got picked out 
And then these pumpkins ended up being just too formal looking. So we've redrawn them and now I'm going to go ahead and base them out. So you'll see them when you're looking at the details here. But um, I'm going to rebase the re um, base my outer area, do my fly specking, and then I will be back. All right, I've got myself base coated. Now I'm going to make a little mask so that I don't spatter on top of my stuff. And I'm going to respatter. Same technique as before. Um, you just want to keep it off the painting area. Okay, I ran out of my khaki color, but I've got my paint um, label on that bottle. Whoops, I have just a little bit more in there. So I'm just going to swap out my paint, my paint bottles, the lids. And now I've got my label. I've saved it. I don't have to order a new one. And then I can just empty out the last little teeny bit of here that's in there. All right, so now that I've caught myself up, We've got two pumpkins that are painted with just butter, um, butterscotch, and and let's see, no, this one's painted butterscotch. This one's butterscotch plus raw sienna, and these three are painted in raw sienna. Okay, that way this one's up front, then this one, and then these cascade back. I'm going to move up to a shirt now since I'm waiting on this stuff to dry. I'm going to take our deep burgundy and our round brush, and we're just going to make some plaid. I'm going to make a series of little stripes. Kind of have juicy paint in your brush. Then we'll go across. So then we have a nice little plaid shirt. We'll do the same over here, and then we'll repeat across the um, other sleeve. All right, I'm going to take a dry rub brush, the crescent brush, and mix it with um, autumn red and oyster beige. And I'm going to make a pink color. What I'm trying to make is a tired um, shirt color. So we're going to scumble on our shirt. and give them some worn out flannelly looking stuff. You can bury the colors if you want. You can put, you know, worn patches on the elbows versus worn patches everywhere else. Tell a story if you want to. we're going for that shape so make sure that you do give them a little highlight at the center and so see here where I have this perfectly tucked in shirt and I think that that's wrong so I think we need to make him slouchier over here on the side like stuff is coming out and then we'll put some some hay in there as well. Okay. And we may want to bring his buckle thing over and flatten out his hip there. So then I'll go back into my red and I'll plaid up that edge. Okay, so then we've got our cuff situation. So I'll, with the cuff, I'm going to take just the um, autumn red. And I'm going to highlight on his cuff. Repeat as desired. And really, let's go ahead and switch to our round brush. And let's highlight our bird's um, kerchiefs with like a dry brush. Okay, so we'll just give him a little bit of brightness coming up there.
All right, so we're going to shade the shirt with um, deep burgundy. Okay, so I'll shade around the edges. Shade under the collar. Wherever things overlap over other things. Down the sleeve. over and do the other side. Okay, then we'll sh um, shade his cuffs with um, black plum. Wherever things might be the darkest, we could sneak in just a little bit of black plum on his shirt, too. Armpits are a good place. Well, not in this case, I guess. Stay in the lines. Okay, over here, maybe. Okay. That line funny. All right, good shirt. All right, we're gonna check out shading or highlighting with Butterscotch Plus um, the oyster beige on our brighter pumpkins. Ah, too much paint in the brush. Go right through our bird. In case you're wondering why I'm going right through the bird, it's he's there to give me balance. To I want to see and make sure that my colors are balancing out and stuff. Okay, so we'll put our highlight up towards here. And then as you get bigger, you'll rub in larger shape following kind of circles. just a little bit of the soft beige by itself or oyster beige if you're wet you're still if you're cold it's still wet so be careful that it doesn't grab try doing the butterscotch highlights on the raw sienna pumpkins. I'm not so sure I'm liking that. Okay, but we'll let it we'll let it be and see. I think I have too much. Maybe I'll put a little bit of raw sienna in there with too much of the oyster beige still in my brush. And that's a little bit better. Okay, 
Okay, they're looking really chalky right now, but I think I can straighten them out with um, with some shading. All right, so we're gonna take raw sienna and we're gonna shade the oranger pumpkins. Or the lighter orange, the lighter pumpkins, we'll call them lighter. I'm gonna use a great big ginormous brush, otherwise you won't get very far with your floating, your shading. Okay, and you're gonna need to walk it out or we can do some dry rubbing to walk it out. your brush really well. And maybe a little mop action will be out of line. Wipe off on a wet spot on your paper towel and then dry on a dry paper towel to clean your mop. <clears throat> right through your blackbird. You won't mind. Okay, and then I think, let's see, do we want espresso or dark chocolate? Mm -hmm. I think we'll do espresso. Yeah, maybe not. All right, we're gonna try shading on our pump, our uh, browner pumpkins with burnt sienna to keep them kind of pumpkiny colored. Just because I want them to be retiring doesn't mean they should not be pumpkiny colored. Okay, hit the other sides. Well, I guess we'll do this guy right here. out your corners. Mop as needed. Okay, a little shade on this big boy here. Okay, now I gotta wait for things to dry. Okay, we're gonna shade on these um, lighter pumpkins with the same um, burnt sienna. That's given us the perfect little pumpkin-y color, I think. Get it to your edge. drying. Give him a little bit of hot cha cha right there. And then shade where he goes behind. Get that corner. Same thing here.
Okay, I'm gonna come over here and get this side of the big guy. That is definitely going to need some mopping saw mop from the clean side in. <clears throat> and it's a little bit bandy looking, but um, that's not a problem because what it will do is we'll do some dry rubbing after this. My shirt is looking so pink that I'm ready to just take it and erase it. I'm going to try dry rubbing on top of it with a little bit of butterscotch and hope that we can get a little bit of the pink out. I'm just toning it down just a little bit. And I think his cuffs are really, really bugging me. So that brings that up in. And then maybe we'll go ahead and bring a little bit of the orange up into him as well. The butterscotch color. And carry that color upwards. Okay, I'm making the sign with um, Oyster Beige and then Espresso little post here. Waiting for things to dry and we'll finish up pumpkins. Alright, we're getting a little closer. We're going to do little S strokes on his belt. His belt is espresso, and we're going to go into uh, the color that it is raw sienna. Uh, traditional raw, no, just raw sienna. And we're just going to make a series of little S strokes. On his belt. And turn it sideways to get the S stroke going up the other way. Okay, and then we're going to go into Cocoa and we're going to highlight as soon as they're dry the center of the S strokes and then we want to bring out some little tails here, little fluff. And maybe we could put a little cross hatching in between with Coco. then I think to make it look old and yucky and gnarly and stuff we'll do a dry brush across the middle with um, cocoa. That gives us kind of an illusion of something happening but it's not too detailed. All right we're going to take traditional burnt umber and we're going to float a little bit of a kind of a skip tooth thing over here, just to give it an appearance of rolling. And we can even have some of these coming out this way. To enhance. All right, and now we have to break the edge, so we're going to get out our um, Raphael brush because I can get the finest point ever with this. And we want to use um, a little bit. Let's use our cocoa, then it with water. I've got a Raphael number one, a 
look at the point on that. I don't know if can you see it. Let's get you on something dark. Just super sharp. And so what we want to do is we want to make little fuzzies. Like we're fraying. Because this is in the garden. You can get fine paint as long as you load it fine. I think I was loaded like I was base coating just there for a minute. Pick. There's our frayed rope. And we can probably highlight a little bit with um, the oyster color. It's just going a little too far, so we'll back it down. Maybe just here in the middle. Yeah, that's going to be too bright. We could mix oyster plus our cocoa. Okay. We're going to go into the burnt sienna. And we're going to see if we can round out our floating and extend it. So we'll come right up next to the edge and just dry rub. And then start dry rubbing into the middle. See how that just pulled that right on in. Reload as you need to. Got real stripey over here. So it's not how well you paint, it's how well you know how to fix things. Just keep that in mind. Alright, that's nice and round. And now we'll do the same to the brown pumpkins and our other orange pumpkin. Same technique. Was treating this as a glaze in a way. You're running out of spots. Shape right up next to that. Okay. All right, we're going to see about shading some of these little cracks here. The little, um, what do you call those lines? The pumpkin shape lines, I don't know what you call them. Might help if I demonstrate. The shade on one side with burnt sienna, and then we'll shade on the other side connecting it. Okay, that just gives us a little bit of that detail. We don't want this to be too much. flip it over and then we'll do the same thing to the other side but connect it and that is called a flip float you definitely have to connect it or you end up with a little white line in between them And don't go over the edge here. Okay. 
Okay, and then we'll repeat with the rest of them. All right, we're gonna do his little face, and we're gonna hope that I know what I'm doing with his little face. I'm gonna try espresso, and I'm gonna make it real sheer. So I'm gonna use a lot of water and a big fat brush. Okay, and let's see if this is just gonna be screaming. Oh, I think that'll be okay. Okay, there's the first one. Now he's to look like burlap a little bit, so a little bit kind of rough won't be a problem. It's that really washy float that we really need. Okay, we'll let that dry. Okay, now we'll repeat. slightly skinnier. Okay, we're going to make little, um, oh, I don't even know what they're called anymore. They're little gather things, which is like a, a drawn out float. And I think I'm too watery for this technique. So almost like a tornado. And a little bit too perfect. Let's blot them up a little bit. And then I think we can go under there and we can give him one more darkening in the deepest area. And we can walk it out on his face just a little bit. Okay, and then we will have to go ahead and I'll wait till he's dry to float a little bit on the edges of things. Get right up next to the hat. We're going to have hay escaping everywhere. Okay, we're going to sneak in, if we can, just a real skinny little float of uh, the traditional burnt umber, a little washy. Walk it out just a little bit. And then deepen the tips. Go ahead and shade his neck there. There we go. All right, we're going to try shading the hats with the traditional burnt umber. <clears throat> I don't want them to get too dead looking, so that's what I'm a little bit afraid of. Switch to regular burnt number four. The top part of the shading. Let's see what we get. in that room. 
nice little shading. <clears throat> Oops, let me smear it. And I think we can stand putting this as a wash underneath here to darken this. So it's just wash with burnt umber. Let's get our rake out. And we're going to take our antique gold and mix it with water like we've done before. Okay, now we need to create a straw hat. I'll go ahead and give it a weave. Okay, and I have no idea what to do up here. Let's just go ahead and follow along. Okay, now let's mix in a little bit of the um, oyster beige and give it a weave with a little bit of a highlight. Okay, and then we'll do the same basic concept with our little crow guys. Whoops. Lay out the brush. Let's give them a little bit of a weave. And then we're going to take the tips of their hat and kind of set our brush down chisel. And it's a rake, so it'll set down irregularly. And that'll give it that little bit of a straw look. And we'll repeat for the others. Okay, we're going to do the little crow's eyes with the oyster. Color. Okay, that gives them just that little bit. We could try to highlight the hats if we need to on the tips because it's a little bit fading into the background color and you can't see anything. Okay, we could try highlighting the hats because they do kind of fade into the background color. So we could give it a little bit of oyster white just on the tips. Let you know that you're seeing something there. All right, we're going to shade our little hats with um, traditional burnt umber. Real skinny floats. Shade over the top. There we go, just give them a little boaters. All right, we've put some little trim on the hats. We've got it um, based with a Hauser medium green. Now we're going to go ahead with evergreen and we're going to shade on the little trims. And so we'll just do a little cross. We have to switch down our brush. There we go. Just walk it in. Almost just a touch down. Same thing over here. Just walk it across. Okay, and then we'll shade where it goes into um, next to the hat as well, as soon as that dries. We've got our pumpkins down here. We need to shade kind of on both sides if we can. We'll switch to a liner as we get down the, um... Okay, now on the leaves, I think I actually want to switch. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. All right, I'm going to switch to the short bright. It's very easy. It's a much shorter um, flat, and it's very easy to control. Okay, so we'll come out of where the leaves are. 
and I'll almost just paint with the tip of the brush, so like my brush can't into the side just a little bit. We want to shade where things are over things on either side of those things. It's coming out of there. We'll use a uh, liner brush on some of these. <clears throat> Darken the leaf backs. And then maybe a little bit of the leaf front down here. and we'll treat the rest of the leaves the same. Okay, using my triple threat, I can see if I can get just a little bit of a curve, twisty kind of um, thing going on here. A little bit longer maybe. So what we'll do is we'll dry brush into our highlight color, which is olive green. And I'll just go ahead and dry brush accents. Shape following. Okay, to give it that little twist and gnarl. It's a pretty big stem to just treat it normal. and then we'll shade to complete that. <clears throat> we'll come over here. Maybe, probably not with that brush. We'll take a, a crescent brush. And highlight our leaves. And you can highlight before or after. <clears throat> Go up to the top and on his hat. I'm just a little bit of a highlight. On the crow's hats you'll do a dry brush effect. And then when we get on to the um, where it's a little too skinny for a crescent brush we'll just use our round. give that a little highlight. I can bring it on into the leaf just a little bit. Maybe a little stronger. And maybe we could go just a little bit stronger up here. Like a second highlight. Okay, on this curved stem, just going to shade under. And then as soon as this dries, we want to shade on either side or dry brush with our round, depending on which you feel most comfortable doing. <clears throat> Switch to the round. 
and that's a more dry brush to get a shading. You can get much stronger effects doing it this way. But see how that just gives a little bit more life um, in this area um, right here where we've dry brushed or floated. That just makes it really appear like something is bending over and under. to go here where it's disappearing behind the crow. Okay, and I think I'm missing a leaf here with shading. Okay, so I want to see about kissing a little bit of accents here with um, our autumn red. Bring some warmth down in the bottom of the pumpkins. And I think I can I can dig it. Okay, that's just across the bottom. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll switch to burnt sienna on the darker ones. So everybody's not getting the same attention. not dark enough. Maybe we need to... I don't know about deep burgundy. Ooh. Okay, maybe we need a little deep burgundy plus our burnt sienna. Maybe that'll actually show up. It's just a one-to-one. -one. dark corner over here we can have a little bit of that as well. Okay. Once again carrying the colors around I'm going to try putting a little bit of a pinstripe of butterscotch into the shirt just to bring that color up and in. So I'm just using the Raphael, get a good thin line, a couple going in here, bury it down. Okay, and then on his hat, I think we can have a little bit of butterscotch action as well on the brim of that hat. And maybe in our cross hatching, our weave. 
roughens it up just a little bit, gives it a little more texture. And then maybe we can even tuck a little bit of that into his rope here. And down on the Fredo's. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use espresso. I did his mouth with black. We're going to use espresso to make stitching on his face. And then some stitching on I need some black to stitch on his nose. Oops, a little too much water. And, okay, apparently we have a pulling point right there. I'm not sure what the heck is going on. Okay. Okay, then we'll come down here on his patches, and we're going to do the same thing. And I just rough sewn. And then we'll come up here in his hat and give him... marks. Okay, I think we can probably give him, let's see, let's give him some stitching. Let's see about outlining him. Not everywhere, but kind of. Give him some stitching on different parts of him. I think we need stitching on our bibs here. Okay, and then I'll come over here and give him just a little bit of outlining. Here and there, and I was going to give him pockets, but maybe we need to, maybe we still need to do that. Okay, so we'll give him outlining here and I think we'll stop there okay I've got his eyes based bleached sand um, French blue, light, no, French gray blue, and then black. I'm going to take a little bit of the midnight, deep midnight blue, and I'm going to bring it as a kind of a shadow, but I want to deepen the eyes. And then we could go ahead while we're here and dry brush some stuff onto the patch, give it a little bit of texture. I think we could probably go ahead and bring some texture down into, we've got this, let's emphasize that, bring some shadow down. We could give him that pocket we talked about. Bring a 
deeper pocket. And a little bit more texture in. All right, we have to give him a little looky loo eyes with the bleach sand. And we'll make him looking at that guy right there. A little highlight on his nose. Yeah, maybe we don't like the highlight on his nose. And we'll go back and get rid of the highlight on his nose. Okay, now we need to br blush his cheeks. So we'll use the autumn red for that and dry rub them. stuffs everywhere. Okay. Yeah, I think that's... I decided he needed a, a sunflower on his hat. So I base that with antique gold and then I'm smearing in some espresso. And then while it's wet I'll go into black and make it like it's shaded with a bunch of seeds. Alright, we'll take our birds and we'll take burnt sienna and we're going to highlight shade, that is, the beak. Okay, and maybe we'll go ahead and shade the flower. Just kind of a little C stroke and then fill in where you leave the gaps. Right, I like that. And then we'll take the um, marigold color. Is it marigold? Mustard seed. And we'll highlight Mr. Beaky's, okay, and the flowers. I've got his little glove based with espresso plus light French gray blue. And I take light French gray blue and I'm just going to highlight the centers of the fingers. I really don't want these gloves to take over the piece, so I'm going to tackle a bunch of straw, so I just need some kind of structure there. And we'll see if we need to do more to it in a little bit here. We've still got to pull a whole bunch of um, hay and stuff out of this guy. Let's go down here to the um, stick and we'll get out a soft black and we'll do a little floaty float on the stick. Okay. Give it a little dimension down the edge. And then we'll float. And our highlight, let's pick on, who should we pick on? Um, maybe the burnt sienna. Let's just drag down a little bit of burnt sienna. 
And that brought in the Pebble Burnt Sienna plus um, Bleach Sand. And then maybe just a little bit more Bleach Sand. Let's deepen the shading on his hat next to his face and then kind of wash it in with soft black. Kind of like a, almost an angle shade. Our hay and stuff is going to show up a lot better if we have good shadow. And we can go ahead and shadow over the top as well. I think let's go ahead and shade on the shirt as well. We don't want it to get too strong, but we don't want it to be too weak either. Okay, and let's bring back some of this. It's giving it a little bit more dimension. Okay, maybe we can bring the cuffs down. See where the cuffs are. And that shirt disappears down here. Okay, now what we've done, oops, now what we've done is we've got this area kind of getting more contrasty. We come down here, we don't have the same kind of contrast on our pumpkins. So I think we need to do something about that. The question is, is black, um, soft black the color to do it with? So I'm going to try in some of our deeply dark areas. Pulling that out. Ah! There's a paint flying everywhere, huh? Okay, so what that gave us is a lovely line of debarkation. I'm not sure I'm liking that. But I do think I like the depth back here. So let's go for this guy over here. Get him all shaded up back there. round things out. Okay, so now he's more behind now. I like that. Now this guy needs to become more behind. The curved flats are great for rounding out floats. the exception of right there. Sometimes the glare from the wet paint just is killer. Okay, I'll wait for that one to dry. Now let's get this bottom corner. And of course
course we've got to get behind him here. Let's round that out. I feel like that's shading down there. Okay, I think we're getting a little bit more depth. Okay, we're going to take Antique Maroon and we're going to do a big old float. Kind of a wet float. And one over here. Across the bottom. that's what our pumpkins needed. And then I can bring out a little antique maroon here with the black, soft black. Okay, and bring it out to the edge. Walk it out a little bit. And this guy needs some over here. And probably over here. Okay, and then as far as antique maroon goes, it seems to me we could probably bring some of that on his elbow where we don't want the color so dark but we need it toned down just a little bit. That's good. And I think we can bring a little bit across the straw hat. Maybe a little ooh, onto his face. There we go. And a little bit on his feed sack. And I'm wanting some in his pants. Whether he wants any in his pants or not, I don't know. But he's getting some. We need to bring that color through. We'll take some espresso for our sign and we'll give it a kind of a drop shadow effect. And maybe we'll go into soft black for that. Okay, and then we'll take our soft black, and let's distress it first. Just take our curved flat brush and some espresso, and just dry rub, drag, dry brush, drag across it. And then we'll take our soft black and a round brush, because we don't want it to be too pretty, and rewrite. our five cents. Let's make the five cents thing be backwards. Okay. When I'm looking at a piece and I squint, my eye is competing between the sign and the, the thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, um, whatever this color is, French gray blue. Whoops. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a blueness and a coolness. 
Now I think that backs it into the background just a little bit more and it, my eye goes there secondarily instead of first. We'll go ahead and outline sunflower. Don't want it to look like a pinwheel. <coughs> And I think we can go into um, mustard seed and bleach sand and just create a little highlight. We can give their beaks a little highlight. I've got tack it over and over on the back of my stencils. But that makes them sticky and they stay sticky. Okay, so to, to be able to store them besides in a big giant sticky pile, what I do is I put a piece of vellum on there. And the vellum, when I stick stuff to it, um, it sticks but not super duper sticky. It's just enough to take it away. And even though this is bigger than um, even though this is bigger than my other stencil, it still works pretty well. Um, then what I do is I pin them on um, little clips. Okay, so I want that stencil. And I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit of our chicken wire to the outside edge. And I don't know how far I'll bring it in. This is going to be a, a definite tester. Alright, so my test is going to be, I'm just going to use a little espresso and a jumbo dauber with a scant amount of paint. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this off if I hate it. And then as I get to the center, I'm going to lighten up how much I put. Oh yeah, I think that's just the exact amount of stuff. <clears throat> and I might even go ahead and line it back up if I can. Um, our stencils, these stencils are keyed so that you can do like this ends where this begins and this ends where this ends begins so that if you need to go from place to place on a big piece like a dresser it's real easy to do. Okay so I'll go out here and I'll do a little fade in. I'll come up here whoops and drag my arm straight through the black paint. It'll look like I've been at war with something. Now we'll go into just a little bit of soft black and at the edges just do a little bit at the edge. And there we go. Yeah, that's just, just the right amount of something. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of glazing. I'm going to use my angle shader. I'm going to try espresso first. <clears throat> and what I need to do is glaze the edge. Okay. And we're just going to go on there and then just cut the corners. You need to see, just, I think it's not going to take a whole lot to get this um, a little bit framed. Just want a little bit of warmth in our corners. We'll see how much we have to go. Then I'll allow this to dry and we'll repeat with another color. All right, I think I'm going to try a little bit of antique maroon in select places. Okay, so I think I've got it in my head that I need a little bit of antique maroon down here at the bottom, cupping across that corner. I'm not even sure why, maybe some over here on the edge. I'm sure there's some kind of logical reason. Just a little bit there, and a little bit on this corner. Draw it up. Let's take a little bit of our espresso, and let's anchor our pumpkins. Maybe even a little bit of soft black.
helps if you get a little bit of water in your brush. Okay, and I've got this lovely weird halo going on underneath. That's not okay. Okay, that gives us a little foreground. But I'm going to load the, the Opal Texture Brush. This has got a really, really firm little um, bristles, and it's nicely domed, so I'm going to get a good um, striated effect. I'm stippling off flat over here, and then I'm going to brush it off. And what I want to do is create a little almost sunbeam effect. Ooh, yeah, there's a lot of sun right there. We'll brush those bristles off after. Okay. And see how that just does this perfect little rake. It's just an awesome, awesome, awesome brush. And maybe just a little bit more. Long strokes. I can dig it. Alright, we're going to start doing some of our straw with antique gold mixed with water and I've been soaking my um, my Raphael number four in water to get it nice and pliable to do exactly what I want and it does a great job of making like straw effect stuff. We'll start down here with this hand okay and we'll just push and then kind of jiggity jag pull it and stuff. I think I need that to end outside. Okay, and I think I am, I wondered if I was going to have to bring some brown in with it. I think I'm going to have to bring some brown in with it. So, espresso. Oops. Okay, we'll start with brown, and then we'll go back and highlight. I think that's what we'll do. And we need to have some hay maybe coming out of his pocket. I'm coming up out of here. Okay, this is driving me crazy. I gotta get a good angle on this. Jig the jag. Cover up with those terrible gloves that we painted. And he's got to have a little forelock of hair. We'll highlight that one right now to see what we got. Cute. Brings your eye right there. Okay, keep your hands out of the stuff you've already pulled in. Just a little bit of something coming out. A chaff of wheat kind of thing. And then we 
bring it back and highlight. If we can get paint to stay on our brush. Now I'm the mustard seed. his hat. You can bring that color in on the flower and maybe across the brim. Okay, we don't want everybody to be the same importance. Okay, I think that gives him a nice little bit of yellow. We can come down here on a dry brush, and yeah, not with that brush. <clears throat> just dry brush, just a little bit of yellow to carry the color. A little bit of yellow in his tie. Okay, now that brings his face up, the attention up to his face, now that we got all that yellow shininess up there. He's got a little attitude. Okay, we need to float some blue on the crows. So we'll use um, French gray blue. And let's go find a crow that pick on this poor guy right down here. So he'll get a little blue on his belly and then a little blue wing. And then you just float the rest of his lines. Get a little bit on his face. Need to line with a little bit of espresso up here. Give these guys a leg to stand on. It's okay to be light, but they're blending with their background. Okay, and I think we can go in with a little bit of soft black and just line in between. Like we have some darkness coming out. needs a little bit of hay coming out of his pocket. He's stuffed everywhere, right? He still needs buttons. Okay, what color is buttons? Button, button, who's got the button? Ay, ay, ay. I think his buttons, I want to reach towards green, but I don't know if it's going to look too random. You don't want to make isolated colors when you're doing um, your projects, so you want to make sure to carry the color through. And so I'm just dry brushing, kind of sketch brushing. Get a shade and a highlight. And then we'll take the Raphael and give ourselves some little buttonholes and 
I think that looks like I almost painted a face. On the bottom, we're going to go into soft black and really anchor that corner. Getting awfully close. I've been having a lot of fun playing. Okay, I can't leave his glove like that. It's just making me kind of sad. So I'm going to float to bring it in. And to give it a little bit of substance. Okay, now it's a little bit better. Looks a little more jointed to him. Alright, we're going to seal our surface with multi-purpose sealer and you know I got out a brush but I gotta tell you using a varnish um, sponge is so much faster and I'll give you a case in point you know you wipe 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 okay and then you watch me with this now see what I've also got to do is smooth out all these ridges and then tap 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 and then smooth 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 and I can do it but why would I want to okay and with this all I have to do is patch up wherever I've left a few drips. Okay, and if you're going to hang this outside, then make sure you do seal all of the surfaces. The next thing I need to do is I need to make a little mark on my buttons. These are actually little checkers. Any flat piece of wood would do. I need to make little marks because I want to put this together in a way that I can dismantle it later. So what I'm going to do is use a little drill. If you have a, a power drill, that's fine. This is a hand drill. It's a hand drill that's a pain to get out of its little plastic here. Don't cut yourself. Okay, I'm going to pick the smaller end, which is this end. And it's real pointy on the end. And then you just go ahead and I'm going to get a grip on this thing. Just twirl. And pretty soon you'll be finding yourself making a little pile of sawdust and you can hand drill any of your little holes that you need to have drilled. Alright, well I'm waiting for those um, things to dry. I'm going to go ahead and base my buttons and they'll get buttonier looking the more we do to them. So I don't think I'm going to do too much because we've got a pretty busy thing going on. Okay, so we're going to shave the buttons just around their edges. And I don't know, shall we go ahead and shade? We'll shade the outside edge too. And then we'll go ahead and highlight the centers. All right, I'm mixing with my um, I'm mixing a little butterscotch with my autumn red base coat color, and let's give a couple of crosshatchy kind of highlights. Across the little guy. All right, we're going to shade to create our boards. Okay, so I'll just kind of come on here and make some, some straight, some not so straight. Okay, kind of looks messy, doesn't it? Okay, so those are our boards. Uh, do I like that that goes down so much? Maybe not. Okay, that's a little bit better. Alright, we're going to dip into our milk chocolate and dry rub um, 
some different streaks and stuff on it. You'll be able to see through our boards. Okay, and this is how we're going to bring the color in. Harder in some areas, lighter in other areas. Make sure you accentuate those edges because that's where we're going to put cracks and stuff. If you go over your black, you can always put it back so you don't have to worry about you know, keeping it all perfect and everything. Already getting a little woody looking. Now go back through, accent where you think you missed or where you want more color. I didn't even hit this part. Okay, right next we go with Honey Brown, just dirty brushed. this to look like a rustic old field sign of some sort. All right, now we'll go with cocoa, which I think I had out. I did a little bit on top. Okay, you want to be careful when you're painting your um, sign wood that you um, you compare it to your burlap color. If you bought burlap from someplace else, you want to make sure that it's going to go because you you can get clashing with browns. If you get a warm brown and a cool brown, you can have problems. So do compare. If you get something like that that's really strong, you can go back over with a previous color. Or you can disguise it as part of the wood grain or a chip or a crack or something like that. Okay, I think we're getting pretty good. We're going to thin our cocoa with our rake and then just really splay it open. Blot it on your paper towel. And then what we're going to do is create more grain. This is the kind of grain that can have a little bit of movement to it.
make some little knot grains coming out here. going to use our round brush and we're going to line the grain with um, milk chocolate plus lamp black. I have some chips coming in the sides of the boards. If you get too busy, you can dry brush back over the top of it. Kind of twist your hand every now and again, and that gives you a more natural kind of flow. go into your black and make a little bit better, cleaner line where your cracked boards are. And then deepen where you've got chipped out wood here. Didn't really chip any wood out over here. Okay, here. And then you go in the middle of that and put some black. You can roughen up your edge to make it look like it chipped that way. You could even roughen up this edge to make it look like this was not so even and smooth. I don't know if I gain anything from that, so I think I'll rub that down. Okay, do we think we have... Uh, I think we have a great big old dark piece of wood grain there, don't we? still sticking out like a sore thumb, so we just erase it. And I think about there. Gonna base the nail heads with graphite. You'll line next to the nail heads with lamp black. Okay, and you can shade on top of them with a little bit of light French blue. And then I'll find a dry one here that I can show you on. And if you do that right next to the black line, it makes it look more raised. All right, now we want to bring the leaf up. I've got two coats of butterscotch whoops, on the lettering, and the leaf is raw sienna. 
We want to bring the leaf tone or value up by using um, butterscotch, a dry rub of butterscotch, and rub them more. And so it's looking just a little bit chalky, which is, I think, something that I had a problem with before. So I'll mix into raw sienna just to bring the two colors together a little bit more and hopefully not have such a, a contrast. When it looks chalky, it's because you have too much contrast. And then we'll go just butterscotch. And I'm going to bring up the color just on kind of one side. I want a little bit kind of a beating heart kind of moment. Okay. And now that one goes in water. And get out our... Um, angle shader and let's start let's give it a little kiss of autumn red oh, I already had autumn red out and we'll go burnt sienna and then antique maroon let's see if we need all those colors maybe we'll just go from the red to the maroon okay and so we'll give it the kiss first shader is tucking in nicely into those little leaf cut um, edges. We'll bring that over. I think I'm liking that that's got that red kind of cast to it. It looks more hardish. Okay, a bit more. that dry. Now off to the one side we are going to float with lamp black to make this look like it's lifting off of the, um, the surface. of a shadow effect. Oops, if you can keep your hand going in the right direction. And just a little line over here. Okay, and I think we can have that be, let's see if it was leaning, maybe even a little bit more down here. Okay, and I'm wondering if we don't just go ahead and put a little liner on the opposite side. Okay, and then we'll do our drop shadow on our other letters while we're waiting for other inspiration to hit. Okay, I'll pull you back just a little bit and I'll work on the fall so that you can see. And we'll go ahead and do that with thinned black. Okay, we'll do all of the to this. Well, let's do the opposite side because that's where I did it on the 
on the, what you call it, the leaf. Okay, and that just gives it a lot of depth, I think. Okay, and just a little darker. All right, and I'll repeat on the eye. All right, we're going to take butterscotch again. Dry rub some more. Okay, and then we'll go into antique gold, dirty brush. And I gotta let it dry. Make it stronger and you can stipple sometimes. Okay. And I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try the antique gold at the tops of our letters. And give them It's just like a dry brush moment. Okay, and then maybe on the bottoms we shall go into uh, maybe we'll go into the burnt sienna. And we'll make that be a a fallish looking leaf letter. And then I think we'll give that a little rinse and we'll get out some mustard seed. <clears throat> Fluff on the brush and just a little bit at the very top. We're going to go on to our leaf with some of the mustard seed. And then we'll float on that side over here with a little bit of our antique maroon. I have to be done painting because this is my last piece of palette paper. Okay, so give this a glazing. And then make it bigger. Biggerize it. I want it so much on, on that side. 
and then into the same color. Oops, I guess so. And just at the very bottom of the letters. go dirty brush into a little bit of the um, oyster beige cannot remember the name of that paint and just whiten down our glowing yellow just a little bit and we have to give our stem a little attention I think we need to back that up just a little bit let's back that up completely trying to decide. Not sure if I like that as white, so I'll do mustard seed and the oyster beige. Not white, but yellow. It's just a little glowy looking. Okay, I think that's better. Alright, I'm going to go into khaki tan. My board is very warm and my um, banner is very cool and khaki tan is my base. So I'm going to go into this and I'm going to cool off the banner. And age it a little bit. And just take a little bit of warmth out of it. And if I have to, I'll just repair with black any of the cracks that I make chalky. that better and now I'll go back in and fix the black All right I think I want to give just a little kiss of red to I cooled it off and now I want to warm it up right okay so I think I want to give just a little kiss of red here and there in the board to carry my red through the piece okay let's see how that looks I think we can dig it. So this is a different kind of warm than we had before. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Okay, I've decided that. I'm going to use my big texture brush again. We need a little bit of warmth in through here. So we'll give it that warmth and then maybe go back and give it the cool mocha, 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 mocha. Just to warm up that center area. a little bit like rays of sunshine. Okay, we're going to fix 
our little glove here. He's, he's not making anybody on this team happy. So I'm using a little bit of that. What is the color? You guys know what it is by now, huh? Um, oyster beige. Let's cool it and dirty it down with a little bit. Okay, so I think that does that. And I think that we can call this one done. So here's the procedure. I still have to roll on a little bit of um, khaki tan over here on my backside so that it doesn't show through, because I do definitely want there to be that layer there, at least in my head. You want to put two coats, or three coats, two or three, whatever you're comfortable with, of um, exterior grade varnish. So that's the DuraClear from um, DecoArt. You want to roll that on, absolutely roll it on. Okay, and then on your back you can do one coat of whatever. Do make sure if you are doing what I did and rolling on, you're much safer to roll the back when you get ready to do um, your banner, okay? Because if you smudge this, you know how your banner can slide around and you're making a mess on the outside. If you move it around, you can have um, a mess up on your hands on this. So I would definitely varnish this first. That way if you sm smudged up anything on the front side, you'll um, be protected. So give everything a coat of varnish and then we'll put it together. All right, I'm going to slip. I've got my two pieces here done. I'm going to put these two pieces in through the cracks, and I'm going to have to do some finagling. Um, so just go slow, and you might even fold this under as you get it through because these little pieces tend to catch. So get yours positioned in there, and then get it centered, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so what I've got is I've got my button in place, and I'm just going to take a little bit of black craft wire, and I'm going to sew my button into position. Okay, if I can find the holes. And sure I can. Okay, this is not a camera moment. Alright, so we'll just sew that in with the wire and then I can take them off if I want to. And but they'll be connected and then they also look stitched. 